Hey guys, welcome to Computer Lab for the 2020 school year. Um, as you can tell, things are a little bit different. This year, I am very excited to introduce you to Code.org. Now, those of you that have been at Ridgeview for a few years have probably done this in Global Studies class with Ms. Mick. So, this year, you are going to get your very own account and you will be learning block-based coding. This block-based coding is an introduction to JavaScript, which is something that coders use. If you are interested in being in DMC in middle school or in computer science discoveries or com computer science principles, this is a really good way to get started. Even if you're not interested in those courses, this is gonna be a lot of fun for you. The way that they present the activities, um, it is almost like little puzzles and games that you are gonna complete. To find today's lesson, you will go to code.org. That is C-O-D-E dot O-R-G, code.org. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. First thing, you will find your favorite browser and you will type in code.org into the address bar. Once you are here, in the top right hand corner, you will see sign in. Go ahead and click sign in. When you sign in, you are going to go to this little area that says enter your six letter section code. Every grade level has a section code. Every fifth grader will use this code, XHTRWG. Don't worry if you forget this, it's not a big deal because it will always be out on the page where you log in to the computer. When you come to computer class, under your block web page, you will see this code. Go ahead and click go. You will see every student that is a fifth grader at Ridgeview. Be very cautious if you have a duplicate name as someone else. So I see that there are two Adams, one Adam J, one Adam L. Make sure that you look at the last initial before clicking. So I see my name, I am Buzz. Of course, I'm Buzz Lightyear. Now I am gonna enter my secret words. Your teacher will provide you with these words. My words were eight, E-I-G-H-T, space, care. And then I will sign in. It is very important that you spell those words correctly and keep them somewhere that you can find them easily. All right, when you come in, you will see that you are assigned to course F. This is a course that is designed specifically for students your age. When you see this, there are lots and lots and lots of activities in here, but don't worry. This is not all one class period. This is going to last you pretty much until Christmas and maybe even later. So when we scroll down, uh, you will see that uh, one of the first lessons is actually about Minecraft, but I wanna talk to you about what these bubbles mean. So there are two different level types, concepts and activities. Concepts will be things like text, videos, maps, and when you don't start them, they're a diamond. When you start working on them, they will be highlighted in green, and if you complete them completely, perfectly, they will be solid green. Then there are activities. These will be things like unplugged activities, lesson extras, assessments, online puzzles, questions, choice levels. They are circles before they are started. When you're working on them, they're highlighted in green. And if you complete them but use too many blocks, they are light green. And if you complete them perfectly in the number of blocks that you were told, they will be dark green. Your goal is to have dark green. You may also have some assessments or surveys that will be purple. Okay, so now we know what those mean. Let's go up and look at lesson one. Lesson one, as I said, is called Functions in Minecraft. Let's take a level look at what the level has. Whoa, there are 12 circles. That means there are 12 activities. There are no concepts for this level. There are no diamonds. So there will be no reading. There will be no puzzle or there will be no video. 
Oh no, I was wrong. There actually is a video on this level. So we're not gonna watch this entire video. It's two minutes and 51 seconds, but it is important to actually watch these. They do have a lot of really good information. Um, they talk about not only the levels, but some really cool ways that coding is used out in the real world. Um, so definitely take a look at these. Then you are going to get to choose your character. So I'm gonna select Alex uh, for my demonstration. So go ahead and click select. And this is where your directions are at. So if you take a look, it says the door is locked, but the agent is here to help. Snap a move forward block to the bottom of the when run block in the workspace to get the agent to the pressure plate. Then press run and use the arrow keys to move out of the house to collect the chest. Now the cool part is, if you're not a strong reader, that's okay. Believe it or not, a lot of really good coders were not the best readers when they were kids. So there is this awesome play button that you can click play. It's the little arrow and I click it and it will actually read all of this for me. So I click play, I can hear it read aloud for me. And there is another really cool tool. If you click this little book next to it, this is called Immersive Reader. This is gonna take you out to an amazing tool that was created by Microsoft. If you click on the little book, you can go down to translate and you can change this into any language that you want. So yo hablo espanol, mm, Spanish, there we go. And I want the entire document to be translated. Now, when I click the play button, this is cool. It will read for me in that language so that I am better able to understand this. Okay, so when you're done hearing that, go ahead and click the arrow to go back. Now, there are a few other things that we need to see. So, this little guy right here, let me zoom out, this little light bulb, these are clues. You actually can get three clues if you get stuck during these levels. Okay, so for this level, this is telling us that the door is locked, but the agent is here to help. So we are gonna snap the forward block to the bottom of the when run block in the workspace to get the agent to the pressure plate. Once we get there, we will be able to get the chest and yes, we have completed puzzle one, congratulations. Now let's go ahead and move to puzzle two. This says that Steve is headed on an adventure. To help get the map behind the locked door on the right, snap the code into the workspace to move the agent to the pressure plate so that Steve can get through. When you are done reading, you click OK, and you can see that there are actually three hints that you can get for this level, those three little light bulbs. So I'm gonna start dragging my blocks into the workspace to get the agent onto the pressure plate. I have opened the gate and now I can use the control panels to get, yes, I can get Steve to the map. And just like that, I have completed level two. Okay, so level three has another video that goes with it. This is very important that you watch this video because this will be the first time that you will be introduced to something called loops. Loops are going to make your life a lot easier. As a coder, it is kind of a shortcut. So instead of having to say, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, you might tell your player to move forward and repeat that step three times. This is called a loop. Be sure to watch this video, it will be very helpful to you. Okay, so let's take a look. This says that Steve is going to continue on the adventure and needs a compass to prepare for the trip. So we are coding the agent to open the gate. Okay, so I need to get the agent to the pressure plate. I see that he needs to move ahead one, two, three, four times. Instead of going move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, I'm going to say repeat four times, move forward. Now when I hit run, my agent will land on the pressure point, open the gate, and I will be able to use the control panels to get Steve to, oh, a tree, just joking. <laughs> I will be able to get Steve into the compass. All right, good job. So we have completed level three. 
Now, this is the last level that I'm going to be walking you through. This one is kind of cool. It says the agent can hover over water, but the player cannot. So that was a really important piece of information that I needed to know. The agent can move across water. You are going to use a repeat loop to solve this puzzle and, and to help Steve get the bucket behind the door. So if you take a look, it says that there is a repeat button in the box already in your, in your toolbox. So I'm going to change that number. One, two, three, four, five. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna change it to nine. Yes, nine. Uh, nine move forwards. Let's see what happens when we put in nine. So he did open the gate, but there were too many blocks used. If I left it this way, my bubble would not be colored in solid green, it would be light green. Even with eight, you will notice that the agent still tries to keep walking. So please make sure that you count the number of blocks that he must move ahead, which is seven, and he will open the gate, and you will be able to move Steve using the control panels, to get to that bucket of water. And that will then take you into the next level with a solid green circle. We've written nine lines of code, wow. Okay, I am not gonna do level five with you, but if you go to the last one, this is your flag, it will say that you've completed lesson one. Sometimes there might be a bonus level there for you, a challenge if you will. Uh, today, there aren't any for this lesson. You are welcome to go on to lesson two, but for today's class, all you need to do is one lesson. Now, if this is something that you really enjoy and want to go back and do later, that's cool. You can work ahead. But as I said, today you only need 